Good day, folks. Today's topic is uh, making use of what nature gives you. And uh, nature gave us a bunch of this giant ragweed. And uh, so it came up in this bottom. This is the old cockleburr field. This used to be solid cockleburrs. And it's because we were grazing it wrong. We had a lot of cockleburrs. But that's another story. Today we're going to stay focused on giant ragweed. Isaac, how tall are you? Uh, like 5'10". Okay, so you're it's up there past your chest. Like five foot. Yeah, five foot. And we won't be here for another, uh, what, about 12, 14 days. Mm -hmm. So it's got another two weeks. Yeah, to it's going to be at that birdhouse. Yeah. So <clears throat> giant ragweed, folks, a lot of people see this stuff growing, and the first thing they do is they go out and get their mower, their brush hog, and uh, they mow it. They mow it off. And uh, what they effectively have done is m probably mowed down the best feed in your paddock. It's that good. Um, there's a giant ragweed, and there's a common ragweed. I was going to show you the difference. I'll try to find some. I. I that's a good thing if you can't yeah. find it, because <laughs> it, it's not very high quality feed. There's some more of that Timothy yeah, the Timothy's coming up over there. I've never seen Timothy come up like that. In July. In July. Of course, we had 17 inches of rain. And it was cool for a while. And it was cool. That's right. But if you look a little closer to this giant ragweed, you look down on top of it. It's got huge leaves. Just giant leaves. So it's catching, it's catching a lot of energy. And the cattle just come in and destroy that stuff. They'll eat the giant ragweed before they'll eat clover. And, you know, we've got clover in here. Um, well, there's, just, there's clover everywhere. They'll go after the giant ragweed first. And then this little guy here is a honey locust. This is one of those trees that you got to control. You keep it mowed off, um, the, the cattle will come in. Oh, there you go. That's the common ragweed. That's common. Now grab a, another leaf. We'll hold them side by side. I'm not going to. Pick this one. Yeah, don't pick it. That's good, good thinking. <laughs> so the one over here is a giant ragweed. He's got a great big turkey foot shaped leaf. And then this one is the common ragweed. Now, cattle and sheep will both eat that when it's in the stage that Isaac has right there. But once it gets up the as tall as this giant ragweed, they, they shy away from it. Uh, they don't eat it that well. I'd be surprised if you'd find lance leaf in here. Oh, there's no, yeah, lance leaf is the worst one. Um, yeah. We'll do a, a separate video on lance leaf, and I hope we don't find him. I know, I know where I can go find some. I only some. saw one plant on that ridge we were. We were just on. We were just on. Yeah, yeah. I was telling the, the young men uh, when we leased this farm. Ian was here in the springtime. That was back in 2007. Well, we'd had it for six years. Anyway, that ridge is just solid lance leaf ragweed. And today you found one plant, so I'd say that's progress. But look, look what's happening here, guys. So we got orchard grass seed that went to seed right here in my hand, and then right beside it, look at that. All that seed, pull out. Just take your fingers and pull up through there. Yeah, that's all Timothy. It's all, all Timothy. Those little seeds. Yep. So th this, yeah. Hundreds of them, just on that one seed. Mm -hmm. The fescue, right? right yeah, there's it. the fescue right next to it. So people say, what, what do you seed? Well, we don't seed anything, but we give it long enough rest periods that all this stuff, including the clover, has a chance to go to seed. And so if you do that every year, folks, you're not opening up your pocketbook and giving it to somebody to buy all this seed. Uh, there's just tons of seed out here, and the reason there is is because we're doing this. We're letting it go to seed. So... We didn't clip this paddock. Um, we got a really good graze on it. Last time the cows came through here, they trampled. Well, it looked like you. Oh man! It looked, it looked like, like you brush hogged it. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh! Look at that. <laughs> that is <laughs> lame. Crazy. There's still litter underneath there too. Yes. That my could goodness, be. Goodness, Isaac. There's. Well, pull up on that leaf and stand up. How tall is it? Yeah, so it's up 
It's up to your waist. Yeah. That's fescue. That's fescue. That's the grass that everybody curses. And they'll eat, they might eat some up to there, but then that's just going to be winter winter feed. Yes, you know, absolutely. Is, so we're, we're in that. winter stock piling mode right now. Uh, August 1st is the official kickoff of winter stock pile. There's, I mean, it's just all in here. Look at that. It's crazy. So this is what, this is what our animals are going to be eating this winter. Now, of course, the cattle are going to be coming through here in 14 days. But I've told, you know, in the young... These young fellows will learn, just take the tips off, especially going into the fall, it leaves you a large solar collector. And with this ragweed, they're going to eat a lot of that and fill up on the ragweed, which is not yeah. a good winter feed. Right. So a lot of this fescue that they, they wouldn't, they probably won't eat too much of it, is going to be, you know, saved for the winter. Exactly. Yep. Because this ragweed, once it goes mature, and then you come into the fall, it, it's no good. They won't eat it at all. But boy, they're gonna go after it like this. This is crazy. Just to show, I mean, you know, if you're grazing it properly and you get a good graze on it, you almost don't even need to brush hog it, you know what I mean? Yep. Like, they came back just- Right, just this ready. would have been a waste. I mean, you can't do this to your whole farm because- Right. That's, you know, that's basically impossible. Yeah, but every now and then you hit a home run yeah. like we did on this bottom. Yeah. And uh, I mean, there's like almost no seed heads anywhere. I mean, yeah. A few. Yeah. Most of it's trampled, which is what that litter is. And if we'd have mowed this, the giant ragweed wouldn't be the height that it is right now. Or so, this fescue. Or the fescue, either one. That's right. That's pretty nuts. I like the uh, the diversity out here. We've got a lot of different diversity, and this was a monoculture of soybeans. So soybeans, soybeans, soybeans planted every year before we leased the farm, and lots of bare soil, lots of erosion. Uh, no earthworms, zero. I looked for them. I never found one. And now we got this teeming of life. Bet you could find 20 different species in here. Oh, every, every bit of it. Fescue, your ragweed, red clover, white clover, um, whatever this is, this stuff. Yeah, there's lots that. of different like little forbs. Mint or something. I don't know if you smell it. There's Timothy back there. It's not mint. Orchard. This is, t whatever that is, that's palatable. Yeah. Cattle eat, eat that. Um, then you've got obviously some of your honey locusts. Oh yeah. Stems, they'll eat some of that. Yep. You've got... Well, there's Timothy. Yeah. Uh, there's probably some Korean Lespedeza in some of this. There was some brome up here earlier this spring. I yep. don't know if it's still there. Yep. But if you're a cow, you can you have selection in here. You know, you can just get a little bit of everything. The one thing that I don't see, guys, and I'm looking really hard, I don't see one cocklebur plant. Yeah, I was looking <laughs> earlier. I didn't see any. Folks, when we leased this that first summer, after they got the soybean guys out of here, they were the ones that propagated them. Um, there, yeah, there's some plantain. There was cockleburs uh, in here that were nine feet tall. And the stalks on them, you couldn't cut them except for with a axe or a brush blade on a weed eater. I mean, they were, you know, big around as my wrist, the stalks were. And the cattle would actually go into the cockleburs and lay down in underneath them just for shade. That's how tall. It was a jungle. It was a forest. And after two years of that, I'm like, I'm never going to get rid of them. But we did. And that's a whole nother story. I'll tell you how we did that some other time. But uh, well, look at this. That's brand new orchard grass coming up. I'm amazed at the cool seasons that are coming up. Yeah, and it's hot. So the summer slump, you know, if you uh, take care of your grass, and of course you you got to put in there we've had moisture. You know, and when you get moisture, you get exceptional growth. Maybe in even times of the season you normally wouldn't. Mm -hmm. But the last two weeks we haven't had a rain. Nope. You know, and just this dew is probably keeping it all going because it's got enough height on it. Let me look at Charles boots. <laughs> well, your knees, you're wet. Yep. Did you did you fall in the pond, you guys? <laughs> you jumped in. No. Pond, you went clear up past your knee. I know. Some of that grass is, was up there. So you think this grass is getting a drink of water each day? Mm-hmm. Yeah. People say, oh, I do. It doesn't amount to nothing. <laughs> I would challenge them to run through here and not come out wet. Mm-hmm. In a drought, that could be a saving grace, you know. That's right. So, 
We don't know when it's going to rain again, but we know one thing. We've got a ton of feed in front of us. Uh, one of the management practice we did was what, guys? In June when it stopped raining, what did I do? We sold a bunch of animals. Yeah. Sold them. <clears throat> sold what? Like 50? 50 head. 50, 60 head. Yeah. Older so cows, cold cows. Um, steers. Steers. Bulls. Bulls. Um, we probably sold what, 10%? A few, sold a few heifers. Yep. Cow calf yep. pears. Yep. Cow calf pears. Some open cows. Just a whole host of stuff. And uh, it... Uh, Isaac, you made a comment the other day that I better stop. You won't have any cows left. <laughs> that was a little bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> There's still a, a pretty good sized mob up there. And The um, thing is, too, you know, we got rid of the lowest tier of the animals. And so now, now as a whole, the herd looks way better. Yeah, yeah the second, what we call second tier. And the mm -hmm. second tier animals, I mean, there wasn't anything wrong. They were good animals. They're just not as good as our first tier. Mm -hmm. And so in a drought... Uh, it's easy to go through there and, and pick those out looking at your records that you've been keeping and you can look at the animals and just pick them out get rid of them and uh, so people get so fastened on to the animals that they won't sell them no matter what and uh, I was on a farm in Virginia stopped by there and golly there's this one cow in the herd uh, she must have had 10,000 flies stuck on her thin and I told the owner the manager I said you need to sell that cow and he looks straight at me and says, I can't. I'm like, what do you mean you can't? Well, he said, that's the owner's daughter's cow. And I think her name is Valentine. And I said, Valentine needs to go down. Because Valentine was attracting all the flies, and the flies were going after their good cows too. So there's certain cows in your herd that they call them fly magnets. Learn to identify those fly magnets and get them out of your herd. Because they're not going to make you any money. They're probably going to be so stressed that they might not even breed back. And uh, so they're just, they're causing you, the rest of your cow's discomfort, and it's just not a good thing. And she's going to breed a heifer. If she has another heifer, that heifer's going to be probably just like her. She's going to be a fly magnet, too. So learn to identify your fly magnets in your herd and get rid of them. And that can be in sheep, too. Anyway, we're going to get going here. Uh, just beautiful ragweed. <laughs> beautiful giant ragweed everywhere we look in here. And this is a result of, we had them in here in the wintertime. We got a little bit of pugging when it was wet, a little bare soil exposed, and Mother Nature will always put a weed there. I'm just glad she put giant ragweed here, not common <laughs> ragweed. <laughs> or cockleburs. Or cockleburs. Cockleburs, oh gosh. There's some stick tight. I knew there was some. Where do you, where do you see stick tight at? Oh yeah, the wild soybean. Yep, they love that one. That one's probably going to be gobbled up. Folks, I'm going to sign out here. Everyone hit that subscribe button on the way out, and uh, we'll check you out down the road. And also, uh, check out our website. There's a conference in Tennessee. It's uh, the one that the Timeless Fence is part of, and it's a regenerative-type conference. There's going to be a, a host of other speakers there, and you need to check that out. Go to our website and look at the speaking calendar, and it's posted on there. It's in Tennessee and it's in September, and look up the dates and, and get signed up for that. We'll meet you there. Y'all take care.